Hey everybody, welcome back to the Place and Fades YouTube channel. I'm your host, Gordon Gambles, here today to break down my DFS picks for this UFC 274 card. Back from vacation, new setup, it'll change as we go, but you guys are here to see my pretty face and these picks right above me right here. Uh, before we get into that, um, last weekend, as I mentioned, I was on a plane, so I didn't even get to see the fights. All I know is that when I landed, my lineups looked like Rob Font's face with that tire cancellation. So we're here to bounce back. I'm settled in, I'm ready. I have done my due diligence for this card and I'm ready to give you guys some absolutely banger picks. All right, first things first, this is a Charles Oliveira main event, meaning we want to target this thing. Charles Oliveira, a guy, 10 fight winning streak with his only one of those wins coming by decision. This man is an absolute killer. We know how lethal he is on the ground. And honestly, I think that's where he has to get it facing a guy like Justin Gaethje. You have two fighters whose weaknesses play into the other guy's strength. This is a fight you want to target both sides because I think it's going to be Charles Oliveira on the ground by submission or Justin Gaethje on the feet by KO or TKO. Now that isn't some hot take. That's what everybody else is thinking. Now, what side am I taking on this? I think I'm leaning towards a Charlie Olive side. I just think that the difference on the ground is a lot larger than the difference on the feet. We all know how much of a killer Oliver is submitting Poirier last time out and doing so with ease as soon as he got that back. Of course, it's gonna be absolutely dicey no matter what side you're on because Gaethje, we know, has the ability to wear people down, has some good boxing combinations and will put on that forward pressure. But Gaethje's de sub defense isn't up to par with the level of the offense on the ground of Charles Oliveira. I'm gonna lean towards Charles Oliveira. However, I do not mind a shot on Gaethje just because his win condition is that knockout and will also score very, very well. One way or the other, give me some violence. I want this fight to finish. That is not the only title fight we have. We actually have the return of Thug Rose Namajumas. You guys all know, one of my favorites, facing the cookie monster, Carla Esparza. Now these two have fought before, and in a third round submission win for Carla Esparza over seven years ago with five takedowns and a lot of control time. And honestly, no matter how much I love Rose and I think she's truly grown from that last fight, Carla Esparza is way too cheap this weekend. Her win equity is getting those takedowns. We all know that she's either wrestle or bust. And if she's going to win this fight, she's gonna score very, very well. This is purely a DraftKings play because I think on the feet, Rose pieces her up. And even at that, she's able to defend a lot of the takedowns. However, if Carla Sparza wants to have any chance in this fight whatsoever, she's gonna to need to take her down repeatedly. And in doing so, that is gonna score very, very well. Who's the better fighter? It's Rose. But the problem is Carla Sparza in my eyes is a one trick pony. She's a wrestler and she's great at that. So if she's gonna to want to win this belt, she's gonna to need to get those takedowns over and over. And uh, I'm gonna have some ownership on her just because that win equity scores so high. However, with that being said, I am also gonna have a lot of Rose because five round fight, if she wants to win this one, she's gonna to have to put leather to face. And I think she is the much better striker. We all know that. And I honestly do think she has a chance to finish her here. Rose is going to be a popular option up top. And we will talk about those other pricier options, but I do like her to win this fight. However, it's hard to ignore the upside that Carla Esparza has. Now, let's talk GPP. One of the fights I want to target the most is that Roy Val versus Snell fight. Brandon Raw Dog Roy Val is a GPP machine. He is a killer to be killed fighter, and I love rostering because of that. But Matt Danger Snell is as well in his own right. Now, where they have both gone a decision against Bonturin their last time out, they are both very violent finishers and also been finished themselves. The way I see this going down is very simple. Brandon Roy Val is a guy who brings pressure and does so very, very well, bringing this hectic pace. And I think he's going to bring that and open up a lot of opportunities for him to do well. We know he's the better guy on the feet and even at that is very, very dangerous on the ground. And for that reason, I'm gonna have a ton of ownership of Brandon Roy Val. However, Danger Snell is no slouch on the ground or on the feet. Where he does get hit, he also hits pretty hard and throws up decent submissions. This is a fight I want both sides because of Roy Val's hectic gameplay. He's gonna go out there, play to his strengths and overwhelm Snell everywhere he goes and score very, very well in the process. But in doing so, you are putting yourself in danger, which is Snell's nickname. So it's it's kind of hard to ignore the upside that Snell does have at 6.9K. However, I am gonna be really high in Roy Val. I do think he finishes here. All right, let's get sneaky here up top. Pay-per-view card, a lot of these prelims are going overlooked because people want to roster the Roses, the Charlie Olives, but someone I'm actually decently high on is Lupi Godinez. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know that I absolutely love Ariane Canelosi. Those guns, I wish I was as ripped as she is. I've been her in the past and I made some money doing so, but she's not getting the most stylistically beneficial matchup here. Lupi Godinez, great wrestler and also great combinations on the feet. Where Canelosi does get hit a lot, she benefits a lot facing those strikers because she's able to out-physical them, get up to the ground, just be the stronger fighter. However, I don't think that's the case here. 
Lupi Godinas is someone who is a very, very good chain wrestler. Her sister's on the U23 Canada national team, and she's really good at getting it to the mat. Another thing about Canelosi though, is when she's on the receiving side of the takedowns, she only has a 25% takedown defense. She's a lot better at bullying these strikers to the ground than being bullied to the ground herself. I do think that she's gonna be outmatched here against the cage, even in the physicality aspect, and those takedowns will be there all day for Lupi Godinas. However, if this does stay on the feet, Canelosi is super, super hittable. Sure, she takes some to give some. It does pack a huge punch, but Loopy's tough. She can be able to go in there, win those striking exchanges. And I think that that takedown upside also scores very, very high. She's super, super sneaky at 9K. Could Godinez worry about that strength of Carnalosi and stay at range and make it more of a boring fight? Sure, that's why she's risky. However, I do think that she's a very, very contrarian and an option I'm really gonna be targeting up top to try to be different for everybody else this week. I do think her ceiling's high. I do like myself some Lupe Godinez. All right, moving right along, I do like to consider myself a younger guy in this space, and these next two fights consist of four fighters who could all be my dads. I'm talking about the OSP versus Roa and the Lozone versus Cerrone fight. These are two fights with guys who have been in the UFC for a while. I respect them all. However, I do think they are on the decline and that's gonna result in some violence for us this weekend. First things first, OSP, 9.2K. Put him right there because I'm gonna have some ownership of him as well. Rua has not looked good recently. Tapping the strikes to Paul Craig is not the best look and he has just not looked like himself recently. Last time they fought, OSP knocked him out in the very, very first round. Sure, that was in 2014, but I see something even similar happen here because Rua has been on such a decline since then. This is a very unfortunate mismatch in my opinion and I do really like Rua, but I think this is OSP's time. They're both old. I just do think that OSP is in better shape right now and will have the better opportunity to score very well this weekend. Next one is the Cerrone versus Lozano fight. We all know Donald Cerrone most wins in the UFC. Not anymore, I think, but for a long time, he is a true vet of the sport. I have nothing but love and respect for the guy, but he has not looked good recently. Winless in his last six, including being finished in four to six of those. I, I do think that this fight's gonna end one way or the other because Lozone's in a similar boat. One in three in his last four, three of them ending by first or second round finish. I do definitely think that Joe Lozone is live just because Cowboy has not looked like himself recently and Lazone still shows that he has a decent bit of power. I do think that one way or the other, they should finish. They both are on their way out, which is really unfortunate to say because I do love watching them fight, but I do think this finishes. I think that either side of this is a good option because it's so hard to read. Which one is gonna have the most gas in the tank? I'm kind of leaning towards Joe Lazone. However, Cowboy's a legend. You never know what he can pull out here. Just give me some ownership on either side with a slight lean towards the dog in Lazone. All right, last but not least, don't worry. I have not forgotten about Chandler versus Ferguson. What an absolute war this is going to be. However, I'm not going to have much Chandler at 9.6K. Yes, Chandler, this guy's fireworks. And Ferguson hasn't looked like himself recently. However, I think we're discrediting how tough Tony Ferguson is. Just take this picture right here, for example. I thought his arm was snapped. I would have tapped in an instinct. I know Chandler's predicting violence here, but I do think it's gonna go out a bit slower than everyone predicted. Honestly, I might have a bit more ownership towards the Ferguson side than the Chandler side. Sure, Chandler showed great durability last time out, but it's not like he hasn't been finished before. Tony Ferguson looks to be in a different mindset this time, and I'm not saying that he should be the outright favorite, I'm just saying the line's wide. 6.6K Al Kakui is, or at least was, one of the best fighters in the division for a reason. Absolute killer, I think his win equity is to finish Chandler here. Patented submission, patented elbows, who knows? All I know is gonna be an absolute war. I'm kind of liking the GBP side of 6.6K for Ferguson. I just think that that price tag at 9.6K for Chandler's too wide. I think that Chandler, if he wants to win this fight, will probably wrestle him like the last three opponents have done against Ferguson. Last two. And I don't think that he finishes him at too high of a clip. So I just much rather play other guys up top. Other guys like Andre Fiala. Now I can't put his name up here right now because at the time of filming this, his salary is not out yet. I just expect him to be around the 9.5K range. Fialo, we just saw fight recently, knocked out Miguel Baeza, and then getting this huge step down in competition against Van Camp. Van Camp making his UFC debut, and he's coming in here against a super tough guy in Fialo who's fought Baeza, who's fought Pereira, and fought a bunch of really good guys in the Bellator and other fight leagues as well. Fialo, super, super tough, and that's gonna be a problem for Van Camp because Van Camp wants this on the ground. Unfortunately, I think Fialo's too strong to let him get it there. I think the power, volume, and pressure of Fialo is gonna be too much, and that's gonna end in a finish for him. I'd much rather play him at that expense the price tag than I would Chandler. I just think it's a super tough debut for Van Camp and it's not going to go very well for him. I do think that Fiala finishes and he's a decent top end target.
All right, let's round out this card of the fights I haven't talked about. First of all, Cletson Rodriguez versus Cedric Vergara. Super excited to see Cletson fight, however, at 9.4K. I don't think he finishes. Vergara is very tough, so I'm going to stay away from him at that range. I do think he goes out there, puts on a master class, and I'm really excited to see him fight. I do think he wins, just I don't know how how well he scores in doing so. 9.4K is very steep. Dumont Chiasson, kind of leaning towards some Chiasson, but not a fight I really want to target too much. Cortez versus Gato is funny. I kind of want some ownership on this one, because Cortez would probably wrestle her to a decent scoring decision, but... Gato is finisher bust in my opinion. I do think that her win equity is scoring a finish here. I don't think she's gonna win any minutes. So if Gato is gonna win, she's gonna score very well doing so. I kind of don't mind her as a GPP play as an underdog, but not someone I'm gonna be terribly invested in because I do think Cortez is gonna be able to be tough enough on top to win those minutes. Garcia versus Newsom. Give me Newsom all day as a dog. I think Garcia is going a bit, a bit overhyped. Newsom has had a tough debut in the UFC. I still think he's very talented though. I do think this line's kind of wide. I do think it should be closer. And for that reason, I'm taking the dog. Even off's too tough. I'm gonna have some even off as well. I'm not the biggest fan of Rogero de Lima. I think even off wins here. And then these last two are ones that I haven't talked for for a reason because I'm still split. I took Roberts due to athleticism, youth, well-roundedness, but that one's really close. I do think Trinaldo has the power to knock him out. I am gonna side with Roberts, however, and I can't get a read on this Willie versus Brown one. I'm gonna admit it. Yes, really volatile, can see it finishing either side, and for that reason, I will have some ownership. Chaos Williams, huge power. Brown has been knocked out before, so maybe you want some of him, but I do think I'm gonna pick Randy Brown to win this fight in general. Very good movement, good striking, decent ground game as well. It's just one I'm not confident enough to go out here and make it one of my core plays, because of the uncertainties. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that one. But other than that, I've covered every single fight on this card. I'm super happy to have done it for you guys. What an absolute beauty. Now, as always, I'm on Twitter. Message me anytime to talk fights. I'll be posting my main slate there, as well as doing a live stream, I think Thursday night, with Liam and Phoenix MMA. We'll go over the entire card, top to bottom, 15 fights. It'll be fun. But once again, I went over a lot of my targets. I do think this is one where you wanna go out there and get those GPP plays in the Schnells, Ferguson's, Espars on those zones, and pay up and get those high scores, get those Fialos, Royvals, OSPs, maybe some Godinas as well to be sneaky. I think it's be super, super fun. Stars and scrubs for me, but I, there is some decent price in the mid range. All I care about, do you guys enjoy the card? Make some money. Hopefully I've given you guys enough information to hit that like button, subscribe down below. Let's make some money, guys. Ding.